Shalom Beth Am, it's Rabbi Kornberg here. With all the craziness that's around us and with our reality changing day by day, I wanted to take this opportunity to connect with you and to connect us together a little bit as a community. Over the last week, uh, probably the most frequent question that I've received, and I know Rabbi Ern has as well, is how are we going to be able to find those moments of support, of emotional support, of spiritual support in the midst of everything that's going on around us? Especially given the fact that like the rest of San Diego and most public places, Congregation Betham has shut down in order to protect its congregants and its faculty and staff. How are we going to be able to be there for one another? And I wanted to start this message by reminding all of us that as beautiful as our new building is, uh, we as a community, we as Beth Am, are much more than just our structure and just our building. We are a community that has interconnections, that has the ability to support one another. And as we're gonna see with technology, uh, we're gonna find ways to do that. I'll talk a little bit more about that uh, towards the end of this video. And many of you have seen in the email that also go, comes along with this video, there are lots of opportunities, uh, both from a learning side of things, from a just connection uh, opportunity, the ability to talk to the rabbis, even though uh, we're not necessarily going to be meeting in our offices. Um, all of those things are going to go on with the technology that, that we have. So please take a look at the email please find those opportunities and those moments that, uh, that you can connect and connect to other people to be there for them as well. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about that at the, at the end of, of, of this video. But before we get to that, I, I wanted to, to share a few thoughts of how we as Jews and we as human beings can cope with all of the craziness. Because this is really like unlike what most of us have experienced in our lives before. We've experienced times of stress, we've experienced times of, of, of trouble, but, uh, but this is, is different. And uh, I was just speaking to, to Debbie this morning and she had gone by one of the Trader Joe's and she said, my God, it's, it's like what we heard about uh, in Russia and in Cuba with, with lines outside and people are trying to stay away from each other. And it's, it's really, it's really uh, every day challenge and every day uncertain. And we as human beings, uh, we like certainty. We, we are built to want to know what's going on around us. We're built to want to be able to, uh, to cope with, with our surroundings by saying, oh, I understand this. I know where this is going. And when we don't have that, we get stressed out. We, our stress levels increase. Our anxiety increases. And this is a normal reaction. Um, it's there to protect us, actually, but it can also create challenges and upend our sense of safety and well being. So, how do we manage this time, which is built on uncertainty? Uh, each and every day, we're getting new information. Each and every day, things change. Uh, we don't know have we been exposed, have we not been exposed? How do we manage that? How do we cope with that? And there are actually quite a few things that we can do to help ourselves, to help our families and our children manage and cope throughout all of this. And I wanna share a couple of those with you today. Um, here are five different things that psychologist Doreen Marshall has suggested. First and foremost, to separate what is in our control and what is not in our control. There are a lot of things that we can do in the midst of all of this to keep ourselves healthy, to keep ourselves safe, to remind us that we do have some control over what is going on around us, um, both physically and mentally. First and foremost, to follow the recommendations, um, to take those seriously of washing our hands, of keeping a distance, of not going out unless we absolutely need to. But also from a mental side of things, you know, now that we're not doing our normal routine, everybody is 
focused on the news 24 seven. Everybody is reading the internet. There's a lot of information that's out there and sometimes that can be overwhelming. Sometimes we can really work to limit our consumption of the news and what's going on. Do we really need to know everything that's happening on this particular ship that we're not on or in this particular place that isn't part of what our reality is and what our needs are? When we get all of that, it overwhelms us. And that's not to say that we shouldn't be thinking about it, we shouldn't be cautious, we shouldn't know what's coming down the road, but we should, especially for our, our children, limit what it is that we are exposing ourselves to so that we stay informed but don't get overwhelmed by it. Number two, do the things that help you feel a sense of safety. Everyone is different and there's no need to compare uh, ourselves to anyone else. If you need to do something for yourself and for your family to feel safe, even if nobody else is doing that thing, do it. Work to create that sense of safety around you. And it reminds us that we are in control of our environments and we do have some ability to keep ourselves and our families safe. Obviously, we're not in control of everything, but we work to create that safety and we work to do the things that we can do. Third, and this I think is really important, get outside in nature, even if we are avoiding others. Take a walk, go outside for a hike, work to create that, that space around you so that you're not necessarily coming in contact with others, but a change of scenery does wonders. And for those of us who are really going to be struggling with being cooped up in our homes, getting outside, even a walk around the block, really can do a great deal for us and for our families to lift our spirits and remind us that, um, that there is a world out there and that we are still part of it, even though we are feeling that isolation. The fourth piece is to challenge ourselves to stay in the present. We all have a tendency uh, to not only think about what's happening to us right now, but then to project worry out into the future. Um, but that's a challenge and that's something that if we can avoid doing, um, it can really help us. Uh, many of our grandparents used to remind us, don't borrow trouble. Um, yes, there are a lot of things that could happen over these next few weeks. And once again, we need to be knowledgeable and we need to not hide ourselves uh, from what can be there, but let's not bring that worry on us before it is we need to deal with those issues and with those items. It creates a level of stress that is disproportionate to where we are at the moment. It builds on itself and it builds in our families. And it's something that if we can try to avoid and keep ourselves in the moment, uh, it will help us. When we find ourselves worrying about what may happen, we bring ourselves back. We think about this moment. We think about what it is that we can do right now. Um, and that's going to help us. And finally, she argues and she says that we need to stay connected and we need to reach out to other people when we feel that need for support. And that's difficult because Right now, we are disconnected. We're trying to isolate ourselves from everybody else. Um, it's ironic, actually, that this week, the Torah portion that we are supposed to read in, in the synagogue is Vayakel. Vayakel means to come together. It is from the word kihila, community. And it's the moment that Moses brought the entire Jewish community, the entire people of Israel together to talk to them about what is important. Well, thankfully, um, even though we can't do that live in person with one another, we do have the technology that allows us to come together even when we are not actually together. Um, and as you're going to see, we at Betham are going to be uh, using those platforms and capitalizing on that technology over these next few weeks in a lot of different ways. So let's talk about how we're going to be coming together. Even though our building is closed, there are going to be lots of opportunities to interact and to learn with one another. First of all, in terms of services, we're still trying to 
uh, figure out the best way to create minyanim and still create isolation. And it's a challenge. It's a halachic challenge that Rabbi Ern and I are working on. Um, the way it stands for right now, and this may change in the weeks ahead, is we are not holding any services that are open to the public in a live person-to-person -person sort of way. Um, come Shabbat morning, come Saturday morning, we will be live streaming our Shabbat morning services. We will have 10 people and no more than 10 who are together so that we have our minyan. We have the ability to read Torah and to do the different parts of the service that we need to. But everyone else is going to be invited to join us via Zoom, via this Zoom platform. Actually, let me rephrase that. Everyone is going to be invited to join us for this via our live stream, which you have the link on the email that came out, so that you can watch uh, and you can participate. If you are saying Kaddish, if you are saying Kaddish, the conservative movement has written a responsa that says, and by the way, not just the conservative movement, but we have a responsa that says that if there is a minion that is standing, which is why we're gonna have the 10 there, you can join and you can say Kaddish via the live stream in your home. So everyone that is saying Kaddish, please, we encourage you to join us on Shabbat morning, um, to be able to say Kaddish the way that you normally would, um, even though we're going to be doing it via live stream. The other opportunities um, are listed on the email that you have, but I want to remind you to take a look at sort of different categories. I'm not going to go through all the details because you have them in front of you, but different categories. First and foremost, there's the opportunities to connect with us as your rabbis and with one another. Rabbi Ern and I are going to be holding uh, sort of office hours, uh, the, the opportunity to chat with the rabbi on a weekly basis. You'll see uh, right now we're holding it on Tuesday. I'll be there on Thursday. Rabbi Ern will be there via Zoom. You can log in. You can talk to us. You can talk to other people and have that opportunity to connect and to chat and to share things that are going on with one another the way that we normally would as we got together on Shabbat services or, or at other times. Um, there are also going to be learning opportunities that we are going to continue to do. From an adult education side of things, we've already done quite a few classes via Zoom and will continue to do so. You'll see Beit Midrash, you'll see Lunch and Learn, you'll see the classes that are coming up with, uh, in, in the spring semester, or spring session, that are going to be done via the Zoom platforms. But we also want to include not only the adults but our ch and our children as well. So Rabbi Ern and I are working, Rabbi Ern, very, very, uh, very hard on how it is that we're going to create these opportunities and these moments uh, for our Hebrew school, for our Sabra kids, and for our ECC to be able to continue to connect to one another, to be able to continue to learn with their teachers. Um, you're going to see this week that Rabbi Ern is going to and Alan will be doing minyan on um, Wednesday and Thursday. It also gives people an opportunity to say Kaddish, uh, potentially if you need to. I don't know if he's gonna be having a group of people or not. Uh, we'll see as that moves forward. It may be that it's just gonna be the two of them. And you'll be able to say, Amisha Berach, you'll be able to come together and, uh, and, and have that uh, JLC minion opportunity. Uh, there'll also be classes that will be happening for Sabra, for JLC, and opportunities in the ECC as well to meet with your teachers, to hear from your teachers, to be able to hear stories from your teachers. On Friday, Rabbi Ern is going to be doing for the ECC, the, um, the ECC Shabbat, uh, the Kabbalat Shabbat with, uh, for everybody. So please keep up to date on what it is that we're doing. As the reality changes, we will be changing as well. I encourage you to watch for our weekly emails, to read the emails that come out um, from Rabbi Ern and myself so that you can pay attention and you can be involved in everything that is going on at Beth Am. Um, this is a challenge and this is hard, but we as a community are still connected to one another. We as a community are still here for one another. And there will be lots of opportunities over these weeks and possibly months ahead for us to be able to support to learn and to be the Betham community that we can be. 
if you have any questions or concerns or if you have any ideas on what it is that we can do, please be in touch with me. Please be in touch with Rabbi Ern or Gilad and uh, we will be uh, happy to, to try to work those in as well. Ladies and gentlemen, have a good week. Uh, we will be, you'll be hearing from us very regularly as the weeks proceed, but be safe, be healthy, and remember that we are all here for one another.